Hello, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today I'm going to present you a Lightroom plugin called a Negative Lab Pro, which allows you to positive uh, the pictures or scan you've made of your analog films. Okay, so let's start. Well, a few months ago, I made a, a review of the, the Essential Film Holder. I'll leave you a link here, which is like a device. You actually place your film in there, so you can actually make a picture with your camera. So uh, it's uh, great because you get a, a digital version of your, your film, but you get a negative picture. So uh, you had to positive it in uh, Lightroom or whatever software you use. So I actually uh, explained in that video, I've left the, the link for you, uh, how to do it with Lightroom. And uh, it's not easy to get exactly the right colors, contrast, everything. And many people in comments told me that there was a plugin called Negative uh, Lab Pro. And it was really great, easy to use. So I checked on the internet and then I contacted Nate, uh, the, guys, uh, the guy who's actually making this, uh, this, this, this plugin. And I explained that I would like to do a demo on my YouTube channel. And uh, as uh, the demo on his website is uh, only for 12 pictures, uh, otherwise you have to start paying, but it's logical, but it's a demo, you can test. But 12 picture was too short for me because I actually uh, record in three languages. If it was okay, if it could activate for a while for more pictures, he said, ah, oh, no problem. And I act activated for free the full, uh, the full uh, version. So I really thank him for that. So I could actually record the demo. So uh, the thing is, uh, the way it works, you can actually uh, use picture you've uh, captured with a camera, same as I made with the Essential Film Holder. You can actually convert picture made uh, out of a scanner, whether it's a RAW file or a TIFF file, you can do both, so I'll explain a bit the difference. But now I'm going to leave you with the demo so you actually see how it works. It's really easy to use. On the website, uh, there is a lot of information, uh, people uh, sharing uh, advice and uh, Nate himself is really active. So it actually shows a lot, of, a lot of things, but even if you didn't have that, it's very easy to use, but still on the website, you have a lot of information. It's easy to set up. It's a typical standard plugin setup uh, of, for Lightroom. So it's really okay. And it works for uh, Windows and also for Mac, no problem. So I'll leave you with a demo. To show you how it works with uh, several pictures, some in colors and some in black and white, so it's very easy as you can see. Uh, my Lightroom version is in Spanish, but in English, exactly the same thing. Anyway, the plugin is in English, so it, it doesn't matter where, what language you use. So here I've got my pictures uh, here in, in color. And the first thing I have to do is to do a white balance. I go the, the, the small uh, dropper here. I will click in the side of the, of the film where there's no picture, but it's still film. I click just here, as you can see now. Okay, when I've done that, I should open my uh, plugin. So I go with my plugin uh, administration or I simply do Control N and that opens here, okay? So first here, I'm going to do uh, the convert part. As you can see, it tells already it's a digital camera, but it could be a scanner or it could be a scan TIFF, okay? In my case, digital uh, ca uh, camera. Then the color model can be None, basic, frontier, noritsu, or black and white. I'll leave it on basic right now. Pre saturation, I'll leave it on the default. And 5% is uh, the border buffer. So, in case you will not crop your picture before, that would be a problem because actually uh, it will maybe balance with the side of the, of the film, all this. So, better to crop a bit more and then after to uncrop after it's converted. Or you can indicate a percentage of uh, buffer that you should not take into account. I'll leave it on 5% anyway. When this is done, you click on convert negative. Don't click on apply. Apply is when you've actually uh, edited the, the converted negative. You must click on convert negative first. That's it. Convert. It's a bit slower now because I'm recording the screen at the same time. So that slows the computer. But this goes really fast. As you can see, I'm going to reset here. It shows me the picture, okay? And here I've got several uh, possibilities. Uh, it can be a uh, cin cinematic log, uh, could be a uh, rich, flat, all this, uh, standard lab, all this. And you see the aspect is different. I like the linear camera, for example, which is rich, it's okay. And then I've got the standard things, like I've got brightness. I can actually play with it. I reset every time so you can see uh, it was before I started. 
Okay, I can uh, contrast, uh, highlights, they call it lights, but it's highlights, okay. Uh, same thing with shadows, okay, I can work on that. Whites, go to the top, but less, okay. Blacks, same story, okay, so it's easy, okay. Then uh, you can actually soften highlights. If you see you have some clipping or it's a bit uh, too high, uh, as you can see it gives takes out a bit of contrast in the in that part, so it's a bit safe. And same thing with the low lights, but here I don't have. Then you can have, have white clip and black clip is also to limit uh, the highlights of this. Add white light and all this. I don't actually use that. Leave it on zero. I prefer to touch with the white and the black. Okay, but well. When you study the, the story of it, the manual, you will see there a lot of options. White balance, give it unknown, but I could actually uh, do auto warm, for example, or auto cool, or give a film uh, profile like Kodak white balance, okay, this one, or Fujifilm white balance, or Cine Steel, they also have it, all this. I'll leave it on none right now, or auto neutral, or none, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what you want, doesn't matter, it's just a demo for you, okay? Then you can actually work on mid light, highlights, shadows, it works on all the colors to give exactly what you want, the range, it's uh, how much it applies. And then you have sharpen, you can actually uh, sharpen leave as set or uh, no sharpen or sharpen lab or sharpen scanner, I'll leave it as set, I'll leave it like this, okay? But you can actually work with that. Then you can make a copy of what you've done as a TIFF or a JPEG, but actually in Lightroom, doesn't matter to do that because you can actually do a virtual copy of the original and then work on a second version anyway, so it doesn't matter. Once you've fixed everything as you want, right now it's all neutral because I reset to show you, I apply and here's my picture. So right now what I can do is my typical uh, film cleaning if I want, if that's some part I'm not happy to. See, I was still had some clipping here, I didn't actually check, I should have checked before uh, uh, actually applying, it doesn't matter, but then I can use the cleaning tool and actually click and uh, if there's some dust on the film, I can actually work on it. So it's very easy. I do another one, so you can see. Remember, first you click on the side here to do the white balance, then actually you do Control N, that shows this. A digital camera, basic, let's try another profile. We can use uh, Frontier, for example. Convert negative, being converted, okay, and here we are, here you go, okay. It's in lab standard, I'm going to reset, okay, lab standard, I could have used something else, lab hard, for example, or doesn't matter, it's to your taste, really. Uh, it's, uh, it's you to decide and try and uh, test everything. I, I like the linear gamma, I think it's the most realistic, but well, matter of test, okay? Uh, in this case, well, we would maybe uh, get the black a bit up, okay? Maybe a bit of shadows, get a bit the shadows, the darks they call it, and uh, maybe uh, the highlights a bit lower, I'm not sure, okay? Maybe a bit more brightness. Well, it's to your taste, okay? Color, I'm going to put the Kodak color, for example, in this case, okay? That really looks I think it's okay and then uh, well he had some possibility to have some loot LUT um, natural frontier crystal pattern all this same thing percentage you want to apply well as you can see is really simple so apply and that's it okay in case I would have made like two three picture uh, in a row of the same boat without changing exposure or very similar exposure, whatever, for example, I want to apply the same uh, same conversion, I could actually select two pictures at the same time and uh, control N, okay, control N, okay, it's going to convert, uh, so it's already converted as you can see because what's important, when you've converted and you want to convert again, you need first to unconvert to negatives. I click on unconvert, and that's it, then convert it and then apply. Okay, so if you want to do a batch, you can do several pictures. I do Control N, and actually I convert negative, I go for it, okay. 
it's converting two pictures now it takes a bit more time uh, it's a bit more slow to convert than the reality because right now i'm recording my screen so it actually uh, consumes pow power of my, my computer but as you can see now i've got the two pictures uh the only thing is i see one only one so uh it's important that there are two pictures that are really a batch they really like three pictures of the boat made at the same time so i would apply the look same look to both okay otherwise i would not get the same results but uh that's okay so apply anyway so you have a look okay now i've got my two pictures that have been converted okay but normally uh, make sure you if you do a batch that is made with the same film same uh, same eyes uh, it was made at the same time same situation otherwise you will apply some result and they will be different okay if you're doing black and white it's a bit different not that much different uh, in the way that you don't need to do a white balance uh, before so uh, control n here i'm going to select uh, black and white as you can see no no, no black and white it, it's not that it detected it was black and white, it's because I've used the software before to record and uh, try. So uh, it remembered that this picture was converted in black and white, okay? So I convert negative. I go for it. Okay, it takes a bit more time. Okay, uh, I'm on linear gamma here. Uh, I could actually save, uh, if I do like my setup, like this, contrast, whatever. I could actually save what I've just done. And when I enter a new picture, later I can actually load the, the what I made. When I close the app, when I reopen, I could actually load what I've made, okay? Same thing. So the only thing when you're playing with uh, black and white, if you start playing with uh, color, as you can see, it gets some tint here, okay? So unless you're actually looking to get uh, some uh, black and white that is not really black and white but it's like sepia or whatever uh, then you should leave it on none in case you do want to give a look to your black and white you can go for example to highlights i go to the yellows for example i push the yellows here okay and uh, i could apply uh, all, the, all the range okay okay as you can see it will affect so Normally I would never use that because I don't I don't like this. I like black and white and I don't like yellow and black, okay, or red and black, but I could do everything this way if I wanted, okay? So I reset and that's it. So basically this is how it works. So what is great about uh, that kind of software is you can actually uh, use uh, analog, make analog picture, uh, scan them, or make picture of them and then you can convert them really easily a lot easier than the way i explained the other day when i presented the the universal uh, holder i mean uh, i can't remember uh, what was his name or i leave you the video here i explained it before anyway uh, manually to convert was a lot harder with this plugin it's really easy but then when once you are actually in a, a lightroom uh, you could actually have all the advantage of uh, digital photography which is the EXIF and the metadata really so when you get here to metadata here it's in Spanish but it doesn't matter by default you get everything uh, you use which is in my case a digital camera to make picture of the negative but I don't want that when I want to have uh, my uh, analog information so here I go down to negative lab pro, lab pro and then it gives you what did I use to convert the negative lab pro converted uh, the setting I had, okay. It was a uh, picture made with a DSLR, which is, it was a mirrorless, but it doesn't matter, it was a camera, okay. And then I can actually uh, write information here. Uh, it was a Hasselblad. So it was uh, the 503CW, in case I would have two Hasselblad. I've got only one, okay. The lens I used was a Hasselblad lens, 80 millimeters, film stock, I think it was Kodak, for example. Uh, Kodak, I could say, um, well, T-Max or whatever it was, okay? And well, I've got my notes there. I could actually, I can actually indicate the size it was, it was 6x6. And I can actually, uh, in more information about the gear, uh, what ISO actually shot, the aperture I used, all this. 
the date it was made, all this. I can add all this information here to actually have um, all the, this information. It means that when I have my film notes uh, I wrote when I made the picture, if I lose them or I don't have the book with me, it's actually embedded in the EXIF. So this is really perfect to have all the information. Okay, so once you've done that, obviously you can export the picture. That was the idea, not to have digitally export. So I go to export. And here uh, I've got my uh, default uh, Lightroom setup. But as you can see here, I've got the negative lab option. And then I can export for Facebook, for Flickr, for Instagram, for a positive JPEG, a positive TIFF. I work in JPEG, I don't bother with Facebook, Flickr and Instagram export. I just use the JPEG I've exported. And here I can actually say uh, what metadata will be included in this, exp in this JPEG. Uh, everything is written, what will be included, all this. And here the same as any export you can actually do uh, with uh, Lightroom, with the size, the resolution you want to export, all this. So this is really simple and it's as always. Okay, so there are a few things that, a bit that are a bit different, which is that was a picture a negative uh, captured with the film uh, uh, digital camera. If it was a scanner and I could actually use that to convert to positive, uh, if I use a view scan or Silverfast uh, software that it was uh, used for, for scanning, it's important that you check the, uh, the, per the profile of Negative Lab 2.1 is installed. Then uh, you make same thing, white balance, as I said, and you crop all this and that's it. Okay. In case uh, your scan was a TIFF scan, then it's important that it has a Gamma 1.8 or Gamma 2.2. And it's very important that you don't do a white balance because if you do white balance, it's not going to work uh, actually properly, okay? But that's only different. So I think, as you can see, it's really easy to uh, use uh, this piece of software, this plugin. I should say a piece of software because it goes much more, uh, much further than a simple plugin. Well, it is a plugin, but I think the results are great. It's easy to use. So now let's go back for the conclusion. Well, I think you've seen that it is really easy to use. Uh, this plugin is for Mac and for Windows, for Lightroom. If you use Linux, I don't think there is, but uh, I think that that was fine. You've seen how easy it is to use. Anyway, in the website, there is a lot of information on how to use it, all this, but even if you don't watch it, I think with the explanation I've given you, I think it's enough and then you fine tune and you work on it and you will see you save a lot of time. I really think it's worth getting this plugin. So it's really great. I really like it. Uh, in my video uh, I made about the film holder, I even advised to use a filter to have the right white balance all this. With this piece of software, you don't even need it. It's really, really good. So thank you very much, Nate, for uh, your uh, plugin, for sending it to me or activating it to me for me because we don't send anything now with software and uh, i really liked it honestly maybe there are some uh, equivalent i don't know i've tested this one i really loved it and i think uh, every people who are serious uh, everyone who is serious about uh, scanning films or making pictures of films uh, would uh, really like to have that kind of plugin because it's really great so if you feel uh, like you, uh, you can try the demo you get 12 picture to test and after you have to activate it and pay for it but i think it's worth it so try it and then you decide so thank you for watching the video if you feel it may interest other people please share it on social networks there's also a button down here so you can subscribe to my youtube channel there's also a small bell if you click on the bell you get notified when i upload a new video my website erichipo.com if you have any question you can leave a comment below and also leave you links of my gear on amazon and links to other parts of my youtube channel and link to my paypal account in case you want to make a donation Thank you very much, take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.